part is macular degeneration. A couple of other terms are used to refer to macular degeneration. Uh, AMD and ARMD are abbreviations for age-related macular degeneration. So this is a de problem with the macula. And it's often related to age. Older the patient, higher the risk of getting macular degeneration. Hence the term age-related macular degeneration. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So what is macular degeneration? So give you some statistics here. There are 200 million people worldwide who have what we call AMD. Usually they are over the age of 50, but can start a little earlier. It's the number one leading cause of permanent loss of vision in US uh, in patients over the age of 50. So diabetic retinopathy affects mostly patients under the age of 50, over the age of 50, in, at least in the United States. Macular degeneration is the number one cause of blindness. And there are two types, don't need to get into technical details there. And so we recommend, at least in US, people with some risk factors for macular degeneration to get their eyes checked regularly after the age of 40. This is not a question about eyeglasses. It's not that they cannot see well. The ophthalmologist has to look into the eye and look for very early signs of macular degeneration, which I'll show you in the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, uh, before I go to that, so what are the risk factors for AMD? Age, like I said, over the age of 50. Caucasian, especially Northern European ancestries, like from Scandinavian countries, they are somewhat of a higher risk for getting AMD. If there is a family history, you say, parents or somebody else in the family has macular degeneration. The family history is important. At least in the US, they found it in increases the risk of AMD by almost 30 times. If a person is a smoker, it increases the risk. Diet is important. That increases, poor diet uh, in increases the risk. And if the overall health isn't good, uh, high cholesterol levels, uh, excessive weight, all these are risk factors for AMD. But the two most important, or three maybe, is the age, if you are a Caucasian, family history, and smoker, if you are smoking. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So what is AMD, age-related macular degeneration? So here I've got a sequence of photographs to show you the, inside the back of the eye how AMD looks as it develops. So. On the left hand side we have this is normal eye, normal nerve, this is the macula, it's pretty clean, nothing is going on. Early stages, I don't know whether you can see it on your screen, but there is very fine tiny dots in the region of the macula. This is the earliest stage of macular degeneration. As those dots get larger, this is how they look. These are known as drusens. That's where the uh, problem is starting. As these get larger over time, and this can take a few years, it does, doesn't happen very quickly, 5, 10, 20 years, extensive amount of damage is happening here. All the white area in the back you see is damaged retina. At some point, some of these, about 5% of these patients who have what is known as dry AMD, start developing those new blood vessels that I talked about in patients with diabetes, similar to that, these new blood vessels are fragile, they break, and they cause bleeding. They start leaking these lipids, fatty stuff that accumulates here. This creates even bigger issue, bigger scars, and bigger loss of vision. So what does the patient see? Well, at the bottom, you can see some pictures here. This kid looks like the left side of the face is distorted. A patient with macular degeneration at this stage, early or intermediate stage, may, may experience that distortion in their vision. As these dots get bigger, they start developing these dark spots in front of their eye. They can't see through that. Now, how do we monitor this? We do. We use what is known as an Ensler grid, which is, this is the example of this. A normal person would look at this and see very straight lines, vertical, horizontal, with this little black dot in the middle. 
a patient with macular degeneration will notice distortion in these straight lines. That tells you there is something happening in the macula. This is how we advise our patients who are at risk or have macular degeneration to monitor themselves every single day, once a day at least, and look for this distortion in the straight lines. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, why is this important? So, what's happening in these patients, whatever is exactly in front of their eyes is they can't see, but anything around it, they can see fine. Now, imagine a patient, I'm talking about United States, this problem is a patient uh, problem of the elderly. Most of them are retired, past the age of 70 or 80. What does a retired person do? Well, they want to read. For example, if they try to read, all the words and sentences will be distorted. They can't read. They can't use their cell phone. They can't see very clearly. They're looking at their family members or their children, grandchildren. They can't see their faces clearly. Around that, everything else is clear. They can't do near tasks, like if they want like cooking. They can't see, they're, they're afraid. They might hurt themselves. If they're trying to walk on the street, things look a little distorted. They can't drive because these black dots appear in their vision. The side vision is perfectly fine. So they're not totally blind, but the most critical function of their eyes is compromised. And that makes their life very somewhat frustrating. Imagine in the United States, a lot of these elderly people live alone. They have to drive to wherever, even to go to grocery shopping. They can't even write a check, uh, can't look at their bills, uh, and it gets very frustrating for them. Okay, next slide. So what do we do? So it depends on what stage of macular degeneration we have. I'm going to use this scheme here uh, in, in this slide and the next slide. So. We have a patient who we suspect is at risk or has macular degeneration. We do the initial testing, figure out what stage it is, whether it's early or intermediate stage. So if it's early stage, we advise them to alter their lifestyle a little bit, cut out smoking. There are antioxidants and they are found in seafood, some vegetables, we need to change their diet limit sun exposure, control blood pressure, lose weight. All this helps to prevent this early stage of macular degeneration from progressing to next stage. This is the intermediate stage here. So if the patient has what is, this is intermediate stage, we also advise them to take certain vitamin supplements. These vitamin supplements contain vitamin C, vitamin E, copper, zinc, lutein, and these are antioxidants within the vitamins. So these are known as eye vitamins. That helps to slow down this process of macular degeneration. It doesn't totally completely get rid of it. We cannot totally cure macular degeneration. There's no way to undo the damage that's already done. But we want to prevent and stop it from getting worse. So this is the early stage. Let's go to the next slide. So if the macular degeneration is advanced, like I showed you earlier, there is hemorrhage, bleeding, these exudates of fatty stuff. We call this the wet AMD, or if this is what is known as uh, geographic atrophy, which is dry, no bleeding, but extensive amount of damage. How do we help these patients? Now, let's look, talk about this wet AMD. As I said earlier, there are new blood vessels causing the hemorrhage. So we want to get rid of those blood vessels for which we give them anti-VEGF injections. These are injections of medications that prevent these new blood vessels from forming there. Uh, and I'll talk about these injections in a minute. There is also some gene therapy to help with that. The, if the patient has geographic atrophy, there really isn't much that we can offer them. This is the newest medication that's available by injections. It slows down this process of extensive scar tissue formation and damage in the back of the eye. At this stage, there is very little we can offer these patients. These create permanent um, issues with their vision. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about these injections. Let's go to the next slide. So there are several 
types of medications that are available for injections into the eye. And the two most common are these two. Uh, and I just looked up, somebody sent me a little note. In India, these are available. Now, these injections have to be monitored and given very frequently. Uh, that becomes a problem. Next, let's go to the next slide. So, oh, this is just to show you that there is a gene therapy available, uh, not extensively available yet, but that is also helps to retard the growth of the new blood vessel. And this is again given with uh, uh, injections. Let's go to the next slide. Now, the problem with these injections into the eye is they have to be given frequently, often every month, sometimes every two months, Patients end up, and then we don't know where to stop. A year later, two years later, we just don't know. Because if you stop giving the injections, those new blood vessels keep growing. So there's a problem with this. A uh, lot of patients uh, get tired of these injections. They, they are uncomfortable getting the injections. Fortunately, in the United States, a lot of the insurance will pay for these injections. Otherwise, they're expensive. Actually, yesterday I saw this headline in, in India, Indian Express, and the headline says about these injections, high patient dropout rate, because patients stop getting these injections in anti-VEGF therapy due to unaffordable rates. In India, it costs, I don't know, uh, five, 10, 50,000 rupees per injection, uh, and also perceived lack of improvement in vision. This is in India. A lot of patients stop getting the injections. Um, and th that's a problem. So in order to get around this issue about frequent injections, they're now starting to um, insert these reservoirs. These are known as PDS. Uh, reservoir into the eye where they get these injections every six months or maybe once a year. And this has just been approved recently, so I'm not sure how successful this is gonna be. But this will be one way of avoiding the, this, these injections. And we run into this problem if the patient doesn't have an insurance and has to pay out of this pocket, it becomes expensive. But that's the only thing that can be offered to patients who have what is known as wet macular degeneration. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So, Patients who cannot be helped with macular degeneration, like I said earlier, they have problem reading. They can't do any near task. There are all kinds of gadgets available to magnify whatever they're looking at. So uh, this is just to show you different types of magnifying lenses um, or gadgets and even computer-assisted generated magnification that, that's available to these patients. We often put them through a rehabilitation process for all this. We train them how to use these gadgets and learn to figure out a way to maneuver their life uh, with this problem. For example, this is a telephone here with very large buttons so they can see them easily. Okay, next slide. 